What does it take to redefine the limits of human engineering? At what point does an engine stop being just machinery and instead become a living symbol of ambition itself? These are the kinds of questions hovering over SpaceX's Raptor 3, the engine that may well determine whether humanity becomes a multi-planetary species. And just when people thought this beast of a machine had reached its ceiling, SpaceX quietly revealed a new wave of upgrades that might make Raptor 3 not only the most powerful engine ever built, but also the most reliable. It started with a seemingly ordinary moment at SpaceX's Star Factory in Texas. Observers caught sight of a peculiar arrangement. Three generations of Raptor engines, versions 1, 2, and the elusive 3, positioned neatly side by side. On the surface, it looked like a display of progress, a visual timeline of SpaceX's relentless pursuit of performance. But anyone who's followed Elon Musk long enough knows there's rarely anything accidental about what SpaceX chooses to reveal. The lineup was a statement, a signal that Raptor 3, long rumored to be undergoing fixes and redesigns, they can loosen under extreme heat and vibration, and they complicate the manufacturing process. The switch to a welded joint might sound simple, but it represents a leap in both performance and reliability. Welding cuts weight, seals against leaks, and improves gas flow through the engine. Of course, welding at this scale introduces new challenges. It's not easy to fuse metals like copper alloys from the chamber with Inconel from the manifold, each with different properties. Precision welding at these junctions must withstand pressures exceeding 350 bar and temperatures capable of melting steel. To address this, SpaceX added a protective plate over the weld, shielding the most vulnerable point without compromising the integrity of the engine. The result is an engine that weighs just 1,525 kilograms, while being stronger, simpler, and more reliable than any version before it. None of these upgrades came out of thin air. They're the direct consequence of hard lessons learned in explosions. Back in May, Raptor 3 suffered a dramatic failure during a test at SpaceX's McGregor facility in Texas. Flames shot upward, the engine tore itself apart, and questions flooded the engineering team. Was it a flaw, a mistake, or was it deliberate? Many believe SpaceX was intentionally pushing the engine beyond its limits, cranking thrust toward 300 tons to simulate conditions it might face in orbit and beyond. The explosion wasn't just a setback, it was data. Violent vibrations, turbulent flows, unstable mixtures, all of it fed into the design improvements now visible on SN20. In fact, testing at McGregor has only intensified since that incident. Reports suggest that in early August alone, SpaceX ran 24 engine burns in a single week, alternating between Raptor 2 and Raptor 3. One milestone test lasted a staggering 201 seconds, the longest recorded burn for Raptor 3 at the time. That's nearly the length of a full orbital insertion burn, a clear sign that SpaceX is no longer just interested in short bursts, but in sustained, reliable operation. To appreciate the difficulty of what SpaceX is doing, it helps to understand just how complex the Raptor system really is. Unlike traditional rocket engines, Raptor 3 uses a full-flow staged combustion cycle. That means both fuel, liquid methane, and oxidizer, liquid oxygen, are completely gasified in separate pre-burners before they meet in the main chamber. One pre-burner is rich in methane, the other rich in oxygen, and together they generate the hot gases needed to drive the turbines that pump propellant at insane speeds. Only after this gauntlet do the gases finally mix and burn completely to produce thrust. The precision required here is almost inhuman. The ratio of methane to oxygen has to be perfect. Not close, not approximate, but exact. Even tiny deviations can spiral into disaster. Too much oxygen and the chamber walls risk melting under the white hot flame. Too much methane and the burn becomes incomplete, leaving behind residues that trigger explosions. Worse still, Raptor operates at pressures so high that oscillations in the chamber can turn into violent vibrations, shaking the engine apart in milliseconds. 
This is what engineers call a hard start, an event where the mixture ignites too early or too violently, unleashing shock waves strong enough to obliterate the engine. This is why Musk once described Raptor's startup sequence as insane. Requiring timing so precise, it borders on artistry. Imagine trying to ignite two separate bonfires, each fueled by different mixtures of gases, and then bringing them together at exactly the right moment so they fuse into a single inferno. Do it right, and you have the cleanest, most efficient burn known to rocket science. Do it wrong, and you're picking up pieces of shattered turbine blades from the ground. Yet, remarkably, SpaceX has kept pressing forward. Failures are not dead ends in their philosophy. They are checkpoints. Every explosion is a lesson. Every broken part, a teacher. And this is why Raptor 3 now stands, not as a fragile experiment, but as a maturing engine with scars that make it stronger. The only question that remains is when the world will actually see it fly. Current Starship flights, numbered 10 and 11, are still using Block 2 vehicles with Raptor 2 engines. But beginning with Block 3, Raptor 3 becomes the default. Cameras at Starbase recently captured Ship 39 being assembled with its nose cone already mounted, the first of the Block 3 vehicles. If schedules hold, and if the engines are ready, October or November could see the first Starship roaring into the sky under the power of dozens of Raptor 3s. The challenge is supply. A single Starship requires 39 Raptor engines, 33 on the Super Heavy booster, and six on the upper stage. As of mid-August, only around 30 Raptor 3 units had been spotted at McGregor. That means SpaceX still has to accelerate production to meet the demand. But given their track record, it's a matter of when, not if. Once a full set of engines is ready, the next chapter of Starship's journey will begin. But just as SpaceX prepares to cross that threshold, competition is stirring across the Atlantic. A German company, backed by the French space agency CNES, recently announced successful tests of their own full-flow staged combustion engine. A machine that capable of generating 250 tons of thrust, Typhoon has already completed 16 hot fire tests, resolving early instabilities and achieving stable burns lasting 85 seconds. It's not just a prototype anymore. It's a contender, and if it enters service by 2026 as expected, Europe could have its first reusable methane field powerhouse, one that on paper rivals SpaceX's Raptor. For SpaceX, this is no time to relax. Competition sharpens innovation, and Typhoon's arrival will only push Musk and his engineers to drive Raptor even further. But for now, with SN20 revealing its upgrades and Ship 39 nearing completion, the spotlight belongs to SpaceX. The engine that once blew itself apart in flames is now poised to become the foundation of humanity's boldest experiment, building a spacecraft powerful enough to carry life to Mars. And if the path forward seems uncertain, that is precisely what makes this story irresistible. The future of interplanetary travel rests on engines like Raptor 3. Failures, fixes, and breakthroughs are all part of the same arc a narrative not of perfection, but of relentless persistence. While Raptor 3 steals the spotlight with its upgrades and looming debut, SpaceX has quietly been stacking milestones elsewhere. Earlier this week, their Dragon cargo ship completed its 33rd resupply mission to the International Space Station, delivering more than 5,000 pounds, about 2,268 kilograms, of equipment, experiments, and supplies. At first glance, it seems routine. After all, Dragon has become such a regular presence in orbit that its arrivals no longer make headlines the way they once did. Yet this mission was anything but ordinary. This latest flight marked the 50th Dragon mission to the ISS, a staggering achievement when one recalls that SpaceX was once an outsider dismissed as a risk to NASA's future. What began with uncertain test flights has transformed into the backbone of station logistics, with Dragon not only resupplying but also ferrying astronauts. The symbolism matters here.
While Raptor 3 points toward Mars and distant ambitions, Dragon represents reliability, the quiet proof that SpaceX can be trusted with humanity's most precious cargo, people. On board this time was more than science gear. Along with 3D printing experiments and tools for studying long-duration human health and microgravity, Dragon carried something as ordinary as tortillas, 1,500 of them to be exact. It may seem trivial, but small comforts like fresh food help astronauts endure the psychological strain of life in orbit. It's details like these that reveal how far commercial spaceflight has come, not only delivering survival essentials, but also enriching the experience of living in space. Yet the mission carried another layer of importance. For decades, orbital adjustments to the ISS were almost entirely handled by Russian Progress cargo ships. They supplied propellant, boosted the station's altitude, and occasionally provided reboost maneuvers to counter atmospheric drag. When NASA retired the shuttle fleet in 2011, reliance on Russia deepened further. But last year, SpaceX proved that Dragon could take on part of this responsibility, performing small reboost maneuvers with its Draco thrusters. The implications are profound. With Dragon flights occurring regularly and geopolitical tensions straining international partnerships, SpaceX is quietly ensuring that the ISS can remain stable and supplied even without Russian vehicles. This duality, Raptor 3 pointing outward, Dragon sustaining the present, shows how SpaceX is weaving a continuous narrative of capability. They aren't just building rockets, they're reshaping infrastructure in orbit while simultaneously laying the foundation for interplanetary travel. And it's this holistic approach that leaves competitors scrambling. Consider again the Typhoon engine in Europe. On paper, it is a formidable machine. 250 tons of thrust, a full flow stage combustion cycle, reusable design. For a continent long dependent on Ariane rockets and struggling to compete with Falcon 9's cost efficiency, Typhoon is a potential game changer. Its 16 hot fire tests and 85 second burn mark genuine progress. But progress in isolation doesn't win the space race. Engines need vehicles, infrastructure, and cadence. SpaceX isn't simply testing engines in a lab. They're integrating them into Starship prototypes, running dozens of launches per year with Falcon, resupplying the ISS, and refining recovery systems for boosters and capsules alike. In other words, SpaceX doesn't just have technology, they have momentum. Momentum is what transforms a test campaign into a revolution. Momentum is why Raptor 3, even with its fiery failures, is still ahead of Typhoon or any other competitor. Every failure is matched with a launch. Every improvement gets folded into the next prototype. That rhythm is something no other company on Earth currently matches. But momentum doesn't guarantee victory. History is filled with leaders overtaken by challengers who solved problems differently. The European Typhoon program may be smaller now, but by the time it's ready in 2026, global demand for launch capability will have grown enormously. Governments will want alternatives to SpaceX, private companies will diversify suppliers, and every delay in Starship's progress becomes an opening for others to slip in. That's why Raptor 3 isn't merely an upgrade, it's a defense. It ensures that SpaceX stays just far enough ahead of the pack, not only in power, but also in efficiency and manufacturability. For SpaceX, the goal is not to build one perfect engine. The goal is to mass produce dozens, then hundreds, then thousands of engines that can fly repeatedly and reliably. That scale of production is what no rival has yet demonstrated. And it is scale, not isolated performance, that will decide who dominates the future of launch. Behind all the technical milestones, there is also the matter of symbolism. SpaceX has cultivated an identity around risk-taking, failure-embracing, and boundary-pushing. When a Raptor explodes at McGregor, the headlines write themselves. SpaceX engine blows apart. But behind closed doors, engineers are dissecting every millisecond of the failure, turning destruction into data. This transparency, this willingness to put prototypes in harm's way, is part of what captivates the public. Each dramatic test feels like a chapter in a story larger than any single engine. A story of humanity straining against gravity's grip. And the world is watching. From students sketching rocket diagrams in classrooms to policymakers debating budgets in parliaments, Raptor 3 and Starship have become symbols of possibility. They embody a simple but radical idea that space is not just for governments anymore, but for private ambition and ultimately for everyone. Think about it. 
Just 20 years ago, the idea of a private company outpacing NASA, Roscosmos, and the European Space Agency seemed laughable. Today, SpaceX is not only leading in cost and cadence, but also redefining what rockets should look like. The notion of a stainless steel giant, fully reusable, powered by dozens of methane engines, it reads like science fiction. Yet it's on the pad at Boca Chica, preparing for flights that could change the trajectory of our species. Still, there's no denying the fragility of this journey. Timelines slip, engines blow up, bureaucratic hurdles loom. Even the most advanced engineering can't eliminate uncertainty, but that is precisely what makes it so compelling. Every successful launch feels like a victory against impossible odds. Every upgrade to Raptor 3 feels like humanity clawing one step closer to Mars. And this is where curiosity transforms into engagement. Viewers, readers, and enthusiasts aren't just passive observers of SpaceX's journey. They're participants in a global conversation about the future. Will Starship make Mars reachable? Will Raptor 3 outpace Typhoon and cement SpaceX's dominance? Will Dragon prove that commercial companies can maintain a space station as reliably as governments once did? These are not idle questions. They're the pulse of a moment in history when the path ahead is uncertain but brimming with possibility. The beauty of this era is that we don't have to wait for decades-long programs to see progress. SpaceX moves fast. Test campaigns at McGregor shift weekly. Prototypes at Starbase roll to the launch pad in months. Engines like Raptor 3 evolve visibly with each iteration. Failures, improvements, flights, they all unfold before our eyes, streamed in real time. It is space exploration not as distant spectacle, but as ongoing story. One we can follow, critique, and celebrate. Which brings us back to the heart of the matter. The Raptor 3 engine, now leaner, stronger, and more precise, is more than hardware. It is a declaration of intent. It says, we are not stopping. It says, Mars is not a dream, but a destination. It says that for every obstacle, there will be a fix. For every failure, a redesign. For every doubt, another attempt. As the first Block 3 Starship nears completion, as Typhoon sharpens its teeth in Europe, as Dragon continues its steady supply runs to the ISS, the competition and cooperation of spacefaring humanity intensify. This is not just about rockets. It's about identity. Who leads, who follows, who dares. And as you've followed this journey, from the subtle upgrades on SN20 to the fiery test at McGregor, from tortillas aboard Dragon to the looming challenge of Typhoon, you've seen how much is at stake. It's not just about technology. It's about the spirit behind it. The belief that what once seemed impossible is already being welded, tested, and assembled before our very eyes. The question now isn't whether humanity will go further than low Earth orbit. That's inevitable. The question is, who will take us there first, and how fast? If you found yourself caught in that same sense of awe, if the sight of engines roaring in the Texas night sparks something in you, then stay connected. Because this story is far from over. And the next chapter is already being written in steel, fire, and ambition. So don't just watch from the sidelines. Be part of the momentum. Like, share, and subscribe to keep this conversation alive and to ride along on the journey. Because when the day comes that Raptor 3 lights up the sky and Starship leaves Earth behind, you'll want to say you witnessed the moment humanity truly began its leap toward the stars, its leap 